Now, our next guest decided to turn the torment uh, military families endure when their loved ones are fighting on foreign soil into a novel. Amanda Prowse had never written a book before, but Poppy Day struck a chord with readers, shooting it straight to number one across the world. Well, Prowse is back now with a new novel, A Little Love. It's about a bakery owner, and I'm going to pull her on this, a bakery owner called, wait for it, Prue Plum. <laughs> Really? <laughs> anyway, Prue has fallen in love for the first time at 67. Good morning, Amanda. Good morning. Lovely to meet you. We were just having a, a, a lovely chat. Um, but seriously, Prue Plum, really? I love the name Prue Plum. Prudence Plum and her sister Millicent. I think it's awesome. You're taking the mickey, you, aren't you? <laughs> it was baking or jam, so which did we go for? We went for baking. <laughs> Are you sending up certain social classes in this? Is this a sort of an oblique um, um, social commentary? I have been known to, uh, to err on the side of that, but actually Pru appears in one of my other novels, so she's already appears very briefly in a novel called Clover's Child as an East End match girl. So uh, she was ah, already right, floating okay. around in my world. And, and of course that feeds into, she's become very successful, she's become very respectable, mm. but her background... Mm. is murky, I suppose, is the best way to put it, is Yeah, it? I think it's a very good way to put it. I think, um, like anybody, you know, wherever you arrive at life, you've always had it. Everyone has a journey, everyone mm. has a tale to tell. Um, some of us are very open about our journeys, and other people maybe have a few things they want to keep slightly under the carpet. Um, so she falls in love for the first time at 66, which is amazing. Well, it's a bit strange. Well, how come... We, I mean, you know the John Armitrading song, I, I am not in love, but I'm open to persuasion. So was she not open to persuasion? <laughs> I think uh, she was. I think she was driven in her career. I think that really took up all her time, her energy. Um, and she couldn't really see herself as a partner um, in a couple, I think, simply because she, she was so used to being by herself. And she actually says in the book, it's like this whole other world existed that I didn't know about, and here I am stepping into it at my age. And I think, interestingly, when love does come along later in life, as it did for me, I was 38 when I met my husband, uh, two years ago, no. <laughs> I, was, I was just going to say, hang on a second. <laughs> I would have thought you were 38 now, but you're gone. Bless, yes. Um, no, I've had a lot of work. Um, no, Good but, work. Yes, thank you. Um, I met him when I was 38, and I think there's something pretty special and pretty magical about when you think that maybe true love has been denied for you. When it comes to you, it's almost it's an incredible gift, and mm. it makes it worth the jump. And that's what happened for Prue. Okay, but at that age, is, is it desperation? Is it companionship? Is it fear of being on your own? Or is it really love? Does it matter? Okay. <laughs> if, if actually, a practical woman you I think, well, for me, it was definitely true love. And I didn't believe in true love. I thought, it, well, not only was I not looking for it, I didn't think it existed, you mm. know. And I'd look at my friends who sort of trawl through Lonely Hearts columns and go speed dating in village halls with a cheaper glass plonk, you know. I'd think, I look at them the way I did maybe UFO hunters, you know, interesting but slightly bonkers. Mm. And I thought, there's no point looking for it, it doesn't exist. And then it happened to me, and oh my goodness, it just blew my socks off. And I remember the day, I remember the moment. It sounds corny, it sounds cheesy, but literally... It, Go on, tell me. It was a, a very muddy, rainy Saturday in Bristol, in the West Country, and I'd gone to watch my little boy, who was eight at the time, play football. And um, this tall man, beautiful man, approached me, smiling, and I had this incredible sensation of almost like I knew him. Um, Did your stomach do a flip-flop? Absolutely. All the things I'd read about that I, I dismissed... Pfft, you know, beer goggles more like than mm. Cupid's arrow. It happened to me. It just totally took my breath away. I looked at him. I wanted to talk to him. I wanted to know him. I couldn't stop thinking about him. He was behind my eyelids. My head was full of him. And it still is, 10 years later. I just love him. Well, that's brilliant. I, I have <laughs> to ask, and I don't mean to be rude or impertinent, but I mean, you obviously have a little boy, and mm. that little boy has a father. Did you not mm. have the same feeling with that man? I didn't. I had a, a, a short marriage to a lovely man, great mm. guy. Um, and I think we kind of mistook... Uh, a okay. sort of what would have been a fabulous fling for something m much more. But the earth didn't move? No, n it never did until I met Simeon in any way. I, I, he absolutely, completely turned my views around, my heart around, my whole life around. It's incredible. And, did, and, and were, you a, were you a very different person before meeting him? I think I was the same person, but I think I was much more cynical about this level of emotion. And when I heard people talking as I'm talking now, I'd think, phew. I, you know, I didn't buy Nothing it. Nothing wrong with cynicism. <laughs> provides a very, <laughs> very healthy... healthy cynicism. Well, yeah. Absolutely. I it's think you're right. Yeah. And, and mm. in this world, we need all the armour we can get. <laughs> mm. I, I, interesting. Um, 
I used to be, and this is one of my great closet secrets, I was a huge fan of Joanna Trollope's books. Yes. And I used to buy them and people say, oh, your wife loves Joanna Trollope. And she, yes, she does, but they were for me. <laughs> I, it would be interesting, it would be easy to characterise you as, as sort of this generation as Joanna Trollope. Oh, wow. Well, she's incredibly successful and I've interviewed, she's a lovely woman and all the rest of it. But there, I, there's more substance to your work in the sense that there's, there's a serious social issue in all of them. I mean, we wouldn't particularly understand it in this country because we don't have a huge military. But in the UK, particularly with what's happened in Iran and Afghanistan now, there's probably no part of, of, of Britain and Scotland or Wales that hasn't been touched yeah. by what's gone on there. And it, uh, we do have people here who go on peacekeeping, uh, but they're not in the front lines. Now, oh, tragically, some have been killed, but you're getting body counts on a weekly basis. So that struck a huge chord. Then your next book, talked about something, it's, it's kind of one of the great social taboos, which is middle-class domestic abuse. Mm. That, you know, it, the media, if you're to, be, to believe what you read, that happens in, you know, lower socioeconomic brackets. Absolutely. You went and you tapped into that. Mm. Now with second families and modern families, the idea of people actually looking for love and happiness in their 50s and middle age mm. is again another one of these unspoken things. It's kind of like... Completely. Well, you should be past that. Oh, you, should, you, should, you should better things to do with your time now. It's just... You know, but, but there are... It, it's really true, Mark. And what's interesting for me is I did an awful lot of research, spoke to hundreds of women who were 50, 60, 70, and each one of them said, you know, I look in the mirror, I've got grey roots and a saggy bum, but actually, I've got a life ahead of me. I'm st I feel the same inside as I did at 16. I want to go out and have a life. And all these women were vivacious, you know, sexy, wonderful. And, and I think they all have so much to give. Um, and, and the pitfalls and sort of... Um, if you like, you know, dangers of dating older, older in life were very similar to dating at 16, 17. Just the circumstances were completely different. So still the nerves about how you look, how did you match up to your competition, mm -hmm. you know, how do you actually meet the right man or the right woman? Um, it was all exactly the same, but it felt very different because in your teens, you know, everyone's kind of geared for relationships, aren't they? We're all kind of socially wired to go out and that's what we're looking for. In your later years, it's very, very different. Um, and well, I society says you shouldn't be bothered with that. Oh, I, I but of course, you actually finally have the wisdom to make the right choices at Absolutely. that age. Absolutely. And you know who you are. I think you're a better package when you're older. I agree entirely. There you go. I agree entirely. <laughs> there you go. Amanda Prose, A Little Love, A Modern Day Love Story. According to the Daily Mail. And <laughs> the Daily Mail are never wrong. Never. Well, in this case, they're not.